as promised, here is my step-by-step -step instruction on how to use the IFD 100 iPad app from system requirements all the way through uh, to hooking it up in the airplane. And I'll show you some features in the airplane as well. So uh, if you like my video, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button. I will also go ahead and put in uh, down below in the information section, I will put bookmarks in there so you can jump ahead and come back and refer to this kind of as your user manual since there is no real user manual for the IFT 100. But my advice is even if you do have uh, the IFT 100 and it's already running in your airplane, go ahead and take a look at this entire video uh, because you may learn a thing or two that I've learned along the way so far uh, since the iPad ad has been out. So let's talk about requirements. What do you need to run the IFD 100? Well, for starters, you need to have uh, an Avidyne uh, IFD 440, 540, 550. Uh, you need an Avidyne GPS, number one. Number two is you need to be running 10.2 OS in your Avidyne. So if you're not, go ahead and get that upgrade in, upgrade to 10.2. It is a free software upgrade. However, you do need your local avionics shop to provide that upgrade. Uh, uh, once they do provide the upgrade, verify that you do have your wireless, uh, your Wi-Fi activated rather, um, because sometimes some of the shops are forgetting to activate the Wi-Fi. So make sure you do have that loaded. I will show you later in the video how to make sure that you do indeed have that. So once you know that you do have 10.2 uh, and you do have Wi-Fi, the next step, of course, is you need the IFT100 app. Well, fortunately for us, the IFD 100 app is a free download um, on the iPad. So, um, although at this point, hopefully you already know how to download an app, I'm gonna go ahead and take you through that process as well. So, welcome to the App Store app in our iPad. We'll go ahead and search, type in the word Avidyne. I'm gonna go ahead and just select Avidyne. So I can show you there's a IFD trainer app, um, something that we can talk about maybe in a future video definitely worth downloading. It is free as well. So if you do not have an Avidyne and you're considering it uh, because of the IFD 100, be sure to download the IFD trainer. It was actually what convinced me to go the Avidyne uh, route versus the Garmin route. So it's a free um, simulator. It's definitely worth your time. It made me fall in love. But nonetheless, you come to the Avidyne IFD 100 and you go ahead and hit download. I already have the the app so it is already downloaded the next step before you load the program I would suggest you then go to your settings page when you're on your settings page scroll down and find your IFD 100 app because in there are a few settings so you'll see it says connect to Avidyne I already have selected IFD 440 but you can see the options are here everything ranging from the 410 to the 550 the default, I believe, was set at 440 or 550. I do not recall. Um, with that default set, my app did work and run in my airplane. However, I'm not convinced that all the features were working uh, at that time. So um, just to make sure everything is running and working properly, go ahead and set it to the IFD type that you have. In my case, I have the 440 already selected. Um, if you do have multiple units, this is where you would choose your IFD chassis ID. Um, one, two, three, or four. For me, it's one. And iPad number, I'm only running one iPad with the IFD 100. So for me, that is one as well. Be sure you do that before you get going. Also, while you're still home, another requirement that is necessary in order to run the app, you need to have the same charts, sorry, you need to have the same nav data in your IFD 100 that you have in your IFD panel mounted unit. So when you update the charts on the panel mount, you have to update the charts on the IFD. If they do not match, um, it, the app I don't believe will work. And if it does work, I believe it will not work properly or with all of the features and functions. So to put it simple, make sure that the two match if you want your unit to work properly. Every time you update one, know that you have to update the other. The process is pretty simple. So all you gotta do now is you go to your app. So in this case, I select the IFD 100. It loads it up. Um, once you go into that page, you have a, an exit and login. You go ahead and hit the login button. When you do this, make sure that you have either Wi-Fi, internet, or you have a cellular unit. 
go ahead and check and make sure that you have the current nav data selected and go ahead and download it uh, if it's not already downloaded. It, once you have it downloaded, every time you come to the app, you will come to the login screen. However, you can simply just hit exit um, and not log in once you are set. So it's kind of a default screen that loads up. So um, be sure to do that. And that um, what you need to get your unit set up and ready to go. So now the next step, of course, is connecting the device to the airplane. All right, here we go. We're in the cockpit, and uh, first thing you need to do is you need to turn on your panel mount unit. Um, before doing so, I would highly recommend uh, either having your engines running or being on ground power like I am currently, because um, when there is a loss of voltage, the very first thing that the unit will do is it'll cut off the Wi-Fi to save power when the power starts to dip. So if you're running on battery and you're not getting your Wi-Fi to work, it could be because you are low on voltage. So if you're going to mess with this and you're going to um, play with the settings and stuff while you're on the ground, I would suggest either have your engines running or be on ground power so you don't run into problems. So startup is the same. Uh, you just go ahead and hit the answer key. Now when you have 10.2, you should get a little window that pops up that um, tells you to either allow the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi or, or to ignore it. You can either press the enter button or you can press the allow button. Um, whichever you're more comfortable with. The next thing I would suggest you do is you come over to the AUX page and go to system, hit software status, then scroll down and you wanna look for this right here. You wanna see that it says SPS, F500, and most importantly, Wi-Fi slash IO and BT that are highlighted in green. If you don't see this, then your Bluetooth was not activated and um, and your Wi-Fi was unactivated, and therefore your Wi-Fi will not work. So that's step number one. Also, uh, when you go to look for your, your Wi-Fi, the default, it, I believe, is IO, IO Wi-Fi. Um, you can change your default setting for your Wi-Fi. You can also, uh, the, the default password is ABCDEF1234. You can change that as well. Um, I've changed my, my password. Um, I won't go into how to do that because you have to go into the maintenance mode. And if you're gonna do that, I'd rather you contact Avidyne and have them talk you through it rather than um, follow my advice in case you have any problems. Don't wanna be responsible for those problems. So once you have, um, you know that you have Bluetooth and you have Wi-Fi, and in this case, we just need the Wi-Fi. The next step is I would come over to the aux and go to setup. Go ahead and scroll down until you see Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And you should see blue Wi-Fi on. In my case, you can see I have the Bluetooth off. That's because I'm not running Bluetooth and I don't need it. Um, but I do need the Wi-Fi for, for the app, so I have my Wi-Fi on. So um, if you turn that setting, you can turn these settings off here as well. So just make sure um, that they're on at least the first time you're gonna use the unit. So next step after that is go ahead and go to your device and and get on to the Wi-Fi. So here's the default Wi-Fi, which is LIO Wi-Fi. So you come to the LIO Wi-Fi. Go ahead and select that. Once you select that, you can go ahead and leave your settings page. Go ahead and close out of that. And then you can come down to your IFD 100 app. When you get to the IFD 100 app, as I mentioned earlier, you will get the default page, the Jeppesen, um, because you're, I am already 
um, current with my charts and they match, I can go ahead and hit exit. So I guess the first thing you need to do, which is something you can actually do while you're home, instead of in the airplane, is set up your IFD 100 app to how you would like it. So first thing I would do is I'd come to the aux, go to the setup page, and then you can choose data block setup. So now in data block setup, you can select and highlight the different sections that you want to change. And as you see, they will change through. So I can come here and instead of GPS altitude, I could put minimum safe altitude and have my minimum safe altitude up on top. I can come here instead of having my vertical speed, I could put um, anything I want. I could put my, my ground speed there if, if I so desire. So for me, I like um, to see my GPS altitude and I like to see my vertical speed uh, required as well. So you can come through and you can change and set all these data blocks as you come through to choose to have them how you like. You can also call them on the left page and you can change the left side as well. So you can see I have it telling me my navigation mode and I have it my active GPS approach so I can get all that information there as well. So um, these are all customizable to however you like. Just simply select what you want and choose it. So, if you are running the IFD 440, uh, you do have the ability to load multiple standby frequencies. Uh, the only thing is, is that uh, at this time, at this release, I don't believe that you can move the, st the multiple standby frequencies, standby two, three, and four, into the the active mode because it's not an option on the 440 so it's a feature that even though you can access it right now um, it doesn't serve a purpose for those of us with 440s but if you have a 540 you can go ahead and load multiple frequencies in there so that's the the first thing that i would i would go ahead and set up um, then you can come through here you can select uh, you have your priest data block presets um, you can go ahead and set up your map page to um, have airport filters if you like just simply um, select it you can set up your FMS you can choose your preferred descent rate so I have it set for 500 but if you want it to be uh, 750 feet you can just type that in, press enter, and it's now 750 feet. For me, 500 seems to be a descent rate that I like, nice easy down. So you can see that you do have some choices, and you can control your alerts, airspace, TFRs, situational awareness, your procedures, high altitude, I have off, low altitude, and you simply can just toggle it as you press it. It'll toggle on and off. So you can set change your FMS. Here's your user options. You can change your user profile. And again, you see some some options are blacked out. Uh, there's those are changes that can only be made on the unit, and then some can be changed from the IFD. These are all things that you pretty much shouldn't have to change because you should already have it set up in your unit. Uh, it just gives you the option to make some of those changes in the in the unit if you like. So those are your, your main settings and your, your adjustments or your setup adjustments that I would go through. So let's go through this. Let's go ahead and, and start from the beginning. So go ahead and I'll click on FMS and that'll bring me to my flight plan page. So I have a choice. I can select the map and have where I can see my map and I have my flight plan on the right. Or I can go ahead and click the FPL button and I can make it full screen. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll make it a partial screen and I can simply go just like with the unit I can select go ahead and put in a waypoint so in this case I'm going to do what my typical route is which is I hit P it already knows PBI is the nearest waypoint so I'll go ahead and I'll hit enter and now I, as you can see I have Palm Beach as a waypoint select again and now I can choose to hold or I can choose an airway 
So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Victor 3. As I choose Victor 3, you can see, as I scroll out, it will show me Victor 3 all the way till the end, which goes all the way up into main. So I can then choose um, where I wanna get off of Victor 3. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna um, press the enter button for Victor 3, then scroll up, and you can see as I choose uh, different waypoints, you can see the map grows. So I'm gonna choose Ormond, there's my Ormond, I'll hit enter, and then from Ormon, I usually take uh, Victor 51. So I can see here on the preview, there's 50, Victor 51 goes all the way up, I'll hit enter. And then I get off at Aster, I hit enter, and then I can go ahead and choose my waypoint. I can choose um, St. Augustine, enter, and the, as the VOR, and then hit waypoint, and it knows the airport's the nearest. And hit enter. There's my flight plan. You can see it all here. And I can simply choose to then activate the flight plan. It's now activated. There's my first waypoint. And there's my course set. And I scroll out and I have all the all of it here. I come to my IFD unit and you can see that there is my entire flight plan on here as well. And you can see it on the map in view as well. So I'm gonna unclutter this a bit. Get rid of some of that nav info. So it's a little easier to see. Okay. So that's how you enter. Uh, that's the uh, FBL page on the FMS. That's how you enter a flight plan. But you, you can see that my airplane is in the center of the map. Personally, I don't like the airplane on the center of the map. I like to have uh, track up versus tracking north, which you can see right here. It's got track north. So if you're in the map page, you simply press the enter button and there you go. You can see it switches to a track up instead of north up. Press enter again and it goes back. So I'll leave it in the track up mode. Um, and let's come back to the FMS page. I got a little sidetracked there. So uh, that's FMS. Now you hit it again, you scroll over, you have info. And then here's where you can get all of your information. Here's um, airport information. Well, actually, this is VOR information on the VOR. I can uh, do a search. I can simply I go and select. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the airport I'm at, which is FXE. I just hit F, and it knows. And then here's all of my airport information located right here. Here's all my frequencies, runway information nearby nav aids, all the arrivals. You can actually uh, click on it and have a uh, visual representation of the arrivals. My approaches and my weather all on this page. It's currently saying meter are not available because I am on the ground and as you know by now ADSB, um, typically you do not get it on the ground. So that's the info tab. Go ahead and select FMS again. You can uh, have uh, routes preloaded or you can load routes from here and activate routes from here and save them. So if you enter them in the IFD when you're at home, once you arrive and connect to your unit, it will automatically uh, transfer the information to your IFD um, and vice versa. If it's in the IFD, it will automatically come back as well. Um, so that they do talk to each other and, uh, and, uh, anything you need in one will they'll definitely be in the other. So go ahead and scroll again. And if you have any user defined waypoints, they'll be there as well. And if you scroll again, one last time, you then on your nearest page on FMS in which you can see we have nearest airports. I can on the left hand side, click on nearest airports and I can change it to nearest airports to my destination, which in this case is St. Augustine. So if you're flying along and you need to divert when you get close, you can choose airports, nearest VORs, nearest NDBs, 
nearest intersections, nearest art projects, nearest flight service, and nearest user waypoints, and nearest airspace. And then we're back to, to airports. Um, you can go ahead when you are in this page, double click on the airports and you can see it loaded the tower frequency into my standby. Um, so it's a quick way to see who's nearby, especially if you're flying VFR and PC Pompano's nearby, double click on it, Pompano frequency's there, and then you can just reach up and change the frequency to talk to them. And it shows you distance and radial. So that's the nearest the nearest tab. Now you do have access to that nearest tab at, at any point, no matter what page you're on, simply come up on the left, there's the nearest button, you press nearest, it'll take you straight to that to that page and you can simply click on nearest or on the bottom or the one in the middle and it'll it'll scroll you through all those as well. The next page is the map page. So the map page, um, same as it's been in, in the 440, you have your entire map and you can scroll out and see everything. And you can you can scroll in and you can pan and just like with any other uh, iPad. The big thing with the, I, um, the IFD 100 is if you have traffic in on your unit and you want to see traffic on your iPad, you can see the outer ring right now, it says 63 nautical miles you have to be zoomed in to inside of 40 miles on this outer ring in order to see traffic. So you can see there's traffic there right now, 1400 feet above, and the minute I scroll out past 40, the traffic disappears. So if you are using your app and you're not seeing traffic, the first thing I would, I would ask you is, how are you zoomed in or zoomed out? What's your range set at? If it's beyond 40 miles, that would explain it as well. So, um, because we're on the ground, we're not gonna pick up ADS-B, I'm not gonna see the weather, but um, you would normally be able to see weather all across this. So let's talk about some of the new features that show up on the map page, which is true for both the IFD-100 and your panel mounts as far as 10.2 is concerned. So the first thing is if you press on the map button to the left and you go to SVS view. SVS gives you a bird's eye view of your aircraft. You can see here on this page, you can see the airport, you can see landmarks um, from this view. If this was a mountainous area, if you were in Florida, you would see um, the topical uh, geographic view. You would see the mountains and, and what have you. You can also see traffic from this view as well. So as you're flying along, if there is traffic, you will you will see them um, with, in relation to your route. You can also see uh, waypoints and things of that nature. You can see Palm Beach there and um, as well. So it'll show draw your magenta line when you're in flight and you can uh, navigate via this page. Personally, I leave uh, my panel mount on this page and I, um, I keep my IFD 100 on my map page. But this is a great, a great view and a great tool that's available uh, to you. So now, one of the big perks of the IFD 100 is for those of us that have a, a 440 and not a 540, is I can come over here and you can see the, the chart tab. Now it says chart initialization, initialization failed. That's because I have not subscribed to the charts for Jefferson yet. But this now gives me the option, the same charts that I would have in the 540 or 550 panel mount that's not available to me on the 440 is now available to me in the IFD. So I can have access to those charts. I can have them um, on my IFD 100 available to me, both approach charts and taxi diagrams, um, virtually eliminating the need for, for any other charts. So that's an option. So that's the, the chart page. There's the map page. Just like with the panel mount, you have the little data. Click on the data and then here's all um, your options that you selected earlier. When you, uh, in the aux page, when you set up your map and it all can show up right there. And this right here is pretty much how I, I fly the unit as such. 
So next you have your, your aux page, which we started on. And if you come to your, your aux page, you have um, audio set up where you can see your, your levels and your side tone and, and your squelch and what have you. Um, but which I don't mess with with the unit. But now this is where, if you come over to utility page, this is where another place where the IFD unit shines. So with a 440 unit, um, the option to use checklist does not make sense to me because it's too small, it's too far, it's not something I'm gonna use. I have a, a hard checklist right here, and I actually have in my iPad, I have a, a Checkmate program as well that I use for checklists. Well, here we go. Now I've eliminated the need for that. Now with this unit, I can come, I can enter my checklist into the IFD 100 and use that for my checklist. Just simply come to edit and you can start entering in, just select on it and you can type um, your checklist in as, as you go and you can create your, your checklist here. So uh, go ahead and select calculators and you now have the option to have all your calculators, again, at your, your fingertips. You have an air data calculator for figuring out true air speed. You have a fuel planner, trip planner, rain prediction, odometer, average ground speed, max ground speed. So you can also notice uh, as I come back up to the fuel planner, you will see in here fuel on board is already preloaded and fuel flow. In my setup, I have a shade and fuel flow, which is talking to my IFD 440. So in turn, all that information then comes to my iPad. So I have access to all that information in my iPad. And so my fuel planner will calculate that accordingly. So there's your calculators. And then you have your timers, generic timer, trip timer, events timer. You can reset them, you can set it for from power on, your, your trip timer, or you can make it from takeoff, uh, whatever you prefer. Same thing with event times, from power on or from, from takeoff. Uh, they're both set for power on, so what would make the most sense would probably be to um, have an event time set for takeoff, have a trip timer. Actually, I would say event times for power on and trip time for takeoff um, is probably how I would, would use that. So now you come across to the aux and scroll over and, la and then you have a system page. On that system page, you can see that is my shade and fuel flow information sitting right there on that page under fuel management. And then you have a software page, software status, which duplicates what I showed you in the beginning, what you're running in your panel mount. Now this shows you what you're running on your IFD 100 as well. And then you can scroll through and see your database information, your GPS status, your data link status. And if you wanted to download logs, you can uh, click that from here. And last but not least on this page is your alert page. On any alerts you have would show up on this page as well, which of course right now we're getting the data link not received. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner, I have a one alert um, set up there. So those are your aux pages. So now let's go back to normal flight. So you're flying along and there are many ways to do things. Um, if I'm out here on the ground and I'm trying to figure out my frequencies, uh, I would start off with the frequency button. I would hit freak and then I'm at the airport. So I would then come here and choose. First thing I would do is I would choose um, my ATIS frequency. So I would just simply uh, click on it, double click on it. It puts it in my standby. I can come up here hit the swap button and it would then load it in my active. Next thing I would talk to would be clearance. So I would just double click clearance. It loads clearance in my preset, as you can see on the, the panel mount. And then I just hit swap and I can talk to clearance and so forth and so on. You can go down to ground and, and swap it and then go to tower as well. And double click that and then go ahead and, and swap it. And the only reason to ever reach up to your panel mount now with this setup would be simply to, to swap frequencies. So um, so that's how you get your, your airport frequencies. So 
Now you're flying along en route. They're gonna give you a frequency to change to. So let's say um, they're gonna have you go to departure. Um, actually, departure is loaded under airport because this is the normal departure frequency for this airport. So we're gonna go ahead and have that active. We're gonna say we're flying, go ahead and close this window out, and we're flying along and now they're gonna hand us off to another frequency. There's two ways to do that. First way is I can simply select the standby. When I do, I have this little window pops up. I can go ahead and enter the frequency, 132.25, and it puts it in the preset. Another thing is you don't have to enter the one, so I can go 18.85, and it already puts the one in, and it puts it in, in my preset. So the other option is I can come to Freak and click on En Route, and I have um, nearby En Route frequencies uh, available to me here as well that I can scroll through, and it shows you who they are, Miami Center, um, et cetera. So I can choose um, 126.325, just double click it, and it loads it and identifies it for me as well. And last but not least, if you fly, if you want to go back to your recent frequency, you can click on the recent tab, and there's all your recent frequencies um, loaded there as well. So those are two ways you can enter frequencies when you're flying along. Uh, for me, when I'm on the ground, typically I will go ahead and, and use the freak button and load up all my airport information. Uh, as I'm approaching my airport, I'll use that as well, and all the other time. Because uh, I'm usually IFR in the system, I'll simply just click on it and enter the frequency uh, manually and then go ahead and, and swap it. So, But if I was flying VFR or just need to pick up uh, a pop-up clearance, then I would most likely would just use the Freak page, go to Enroute, and contact one of the um, centers near, nearby to my location. So that's how you deal with frequencies. So. As you're flying along, so let's go ahead and go back to our FMS page. And let's go to our flight plan. And we're flying along and let's say um, we're getting radar vectors right now. And center goes tells us, okay, go direct smugs. Well, there's two ways I can do that. If I'm on the FMS page, I can simply select smugs and then I can hit the direct button it shows me direct smugs, confirming that's what I want. It shows me the bearing and the distance. And then I can just hit enter again and enter. And it now activates direct smugs. Another option is, even if I'm on the map page, is I can go and hit the direct button. And I can then type into here whatever waypoint I want um, and, and fly directly to, to that from my location. And then hit enter and enter. So you'll see that even though I'm on the map page, once I hit direct, it brings me over to my FMS flight plan page. And it'll do that no matter where you are in the system. So I can scroll down through my flight plan and choose Melbourne and then go ahead and I can see it, confirm that's what I want, hit enter and then activate enter and now we're direct. Melbourne. All that can be done from here. So the other thing you can do from here is you can go ahead and say you're flying along and you want to activate a different leg. Well, you can just come select whichever leg you want. There's a little window that pops up and you can just hit activate leg. It says activate Tico. Hit enter and we've now activated that leg as you can see here by the magenta line. All that at, at your fingertips. So, other option um, you can do while you're flying along, another thing that might pop up, is you might get a hold or a crossing restriction. So, simply expand it out, and say you're flying along and you're gonna have to um, tell you, they say they tell you to cross Ormond you click on it and they say cross Ormond at, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that at zero miles. Hit enter. Here's at. I can choose at or above or at or below. I'm gonna choose at. And let's say they say uh, 3,000 feet. Three, one, two, three. Enter. There's my, my crossing restriction that's set up there. 
you can see 3,000 feet and then I come out and now you can see on the flight plan it shows Orman 3000 as I scroll up I have another visual representation of it Orman at 3000 so I have the information there so now we got our cross restriction we're going to cross um, Orman at 3000 and they tell us oh, weather's gone bad they they now want us to hold at Orman So you simply come just past Orman, hit, you see hold at Orman. So you're entering into, you're entering that point into your flight plan, hold at Orman, hit enter, and then it gives you two options. Um, one is based on my flight direction, hold north on 176 radial, um, or uh, with one, mile, one minute legs, and I'll go ahead and hit enter and the hold set up. If for some reason they wanted something different, let's say they want a non-standard, I just select it and change left to right, or I can go back to hold as published, or I can click, oops, or I can click standard hold. I can change it from one to any number I want, and from minutes to nautical miles, and I can change the turns as well. So all that can, can be set. So um, that's how you, you deal with holds. Go ahead and delete the hold, hit the delete button, and now the hold is gone. So um, I'm actually gonna put that hold back in real quick. Hold at Orman, hit enter, enter. And then when I go back to the map page, as I scroll up, you can now see there's my hold depicted on my chart with my cross instruction. So all that's done from the FMS page. So now we're flying along and we we went ahead and we, we got our weather, whether it be from ATIS or from our FMS information tab, and we want to select a procedure. Just come to procedure, select it, and we can choose our arrival if we so desire. Um, or we can choose our approach. So procedure, and then here's our approach, and I can choose uh, an ILS, RNAV, whatever I want. So I'm gonna go ahead, for simplicity, I'm gonna choose the ILS 3.1. I always give vectors, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and say that they're gonna give me the uh, initial approach fix. So I go ahead and, and have that selected, press enter, and now that's been added to my route. And then as I'm flying along, you can see that it creates a gap. It's sending me to my, my waypoint. So I just select gap and then I can either connect St. Augustine and Cobook or I can go ahead and delete I'm actually going to delete Aster. And I go ahead and, and say connect the gap. Connect Bully and Cobook. And then there you go, it connected the legs. Of course, I would never get that. It, it would be vectors for me from coming from here. But that's how you would simply add an approach and add a procedure. And if you were in the map page, on SVS, which I can't scroll through, but it would then show me my my approach, and you can actually see it on the IFD as you fly the approach. So one final thing that I, I skipped over, just like your IFD unit, you can come here to the land and the nav, and you can toggle through, and you can have it populated or as as empty as you like based on what you prefer. And same thing with the land options as well. 
I usually leave my land all the way up and I usually have my nav brought um, pretty far down. And then you can click on the weather overlay and you can choose what you want to see. You can choose re regional weather, um, continental US, winds, METARs, um, air and signets. So, and obviously if you want to change VOR frequencies, it's entered just like the um, the nav, uh, just like the comm frequencies as well. No different. So that's the basic functions of the IFD 100. Um, if you've seen my last video, in my last video I did uh, fly with it and, and showed some of the features uh, and I will be, all my future videos will have this unit in it and you'll see as I use it in real world and you can get a, a pretty good feel of of how it's it's used every day and as I get to use it more um, I will learn more tips and tricks and, and I'll bring them to you as well so so one last feature is that the uh, you can see I have a mini here and the mini can talk to the IFD unit as well and on this mini I have my four flight so um, my four flight if you come to you can see accuracy says IFD you might be able to say five five meters and I can come to more and I can see here under devices Avidyne 540 440 connected provide GPS and flight plan sent to four flight so I can come to my map page I can see my location I can see where I'm at and I can press this little airplane on top and it says load from panel and I press that and there is my flight plan loaded from my panel into my IFD and I can track it. So the only thing I currently do not receive on my four flight with this setup is I do not get traffic and weather, all of which I have in the IFD unit, or I can simply go and use my Stratus like I used to. But currently I've disconnected my Stratus and it's just a standby unit uh, as a backup for me at this time. So another little perk, one less thing I have connected, one less thing I have to power, one less thing I have to charge. So that's a step-by-step -step uh, overview and procedures with the IFD 100. So if you appreciate my video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. Uh, also, if you'd like to see more of these and more uh, videos of uh, the IFD 100 in flight uh, or just uh, me flying around, um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'd appreciate it. That's the biggest uh, compliment I can get is uh, your subscription to my channel. And if you have any requests, anything you'd like to see, whether it be with these units or just a a video on a particular topic uh, go ahead and uh, hit me up in the comment section of this video or any one of my videos and ask and if I can um, if I can help you out I'd be more than happy to so um, again uh, thank you I uh, hope this was helpful and informative and uh, I look forward to your subscription and seeing you on my next flight so until then um, safe travels